Okay, we blew through all them lights. Uh, the GoPro got hot and shut itself off. And uh, unfortunately, this is all of the um, aluminum transformers coming across a lot of them man they're, they're becoming more and more you know i'm getting those more often than anything now now we got an absolute mess over here we're going to clean this up a little bit i'm going to uh, go and clean up this stuff here get this kind of dialed in before we bring in any more scrap uh i just like to kind of keep this thing in order some of this stuff over here uh like these this here is a freaking nightmare because this bolt every time i see these i've always have the same problem this bolt goes all the way through the problem is there's a nut down in there and you can't get to it you can't even get a wrench down in there uh it's just totally a nightmare and what i do is just take the grinder and cut the head off and uh, bend it back and um, send it from there. Now, these are mostly, I'm um, thinking double copper, so we definitely want to liberate them. And then I have this uh, pile here and then the pile out front that we, um, I just kind of stashed out there. I'm trying to clean up out here. It's an absolute mess. It looks crazy as hell. So I have this a little bit of aluminum the way up. We have this all the way up and then all of this right here we still need to process we took a we had some uh steve brought some bubba burgers we took a fucking three hour lunch <laughs> usually when i go on lunch it's a miracle if i even come back from lunch so i'm gonna weigh this stuff up now normally i wouldn't waste the time i'm actually wasting time moving this stuff twice weighing it i just kind of want to see how much we're going to get out of this stuff if we can reach um close to three grand i mean we got a lot of stuff here but i'm not seeing it i'm, I'm kind of uh, skeptical because of the lack of copper transformers i was really expecting to have a couple more of those thousand waters be copper but you know what i'm not going to expect much from that shit no more so i'm just gonna go ahead and load this stuff up and gear up towards uh blowing through the rest of the scrap over here gonna do some uh, live head cam action I turned the big fan off so it's not overpowering the mic and I just want to show did you get what you needed out of that thing so I just want to show those transformers this one in particular Dell Tech Ballast and this one, Sylvania. Interesting how they both have uh, the same feature. I'll show you how the only way I figured to get these things apart. And pretty much, I don't think I've ever come across one of these that wasn't double copper so they're definitely worth messing with basically i'm just going to grind the welds Now you don't have to go necessarily that deep, but you wanna make sure you get it all the weld. And what I'm doing when I'm grinding, I make my first pass, right? And I come back and then I, I twist this, not that much, that's kind of over exaggerated, but I twist it and I run it straight up and down like this, right? 
and that's just basically opening up the cut so I get you know all the way through uh, where that's welded And then, normally I'd like to take it over there where I got the lip. We got a lip right here. Um, even though it's locked, it's still nice to have that on a lip. Yeah, see that? And then, you get in there and you can see that locks in there like that, and that will not go through the press. She don't like it one bit. I'm gonna have to get a prepared steel out here. That one's being a little tough. I might have gotten off the well. This one was kind of rusty. It's gonna hit it a little bit harder. There she goes. Yeah, we were a little off that weld. Probably get that bottom to break though. Or not. There it is. I guess it helps if you actually cut the weld. Sometimes when they're rusty, it's hard to even see. Okay. Let's see, we're cracking it. Yeah, these things, man, when they go through the press, if I miss it or if someone else is running the press and they miss it, she do not like that one bit. Shit, we're losing transformers over there. Okay. That's that. Now these here, man, back in the day, I used to try to unscrew them. I used to cut them with a sawzall. I used to cut them with a grinder until I found out you could just shear them off. Don't be pussyfooting around with it either, man. You got to send it. Sometimes, see that happens there? Now, when that happens, you can usually just bend that off. Okay. 
Now this one here was a rejection, went through the press, and this delaminated, and the only real efficient way to hit it with a grinder. Or one aluminum. Now, let's knock this out real quick. These here are always just a freaking nightmare, man. They're just awkward. They don't even sit right. I need a screwdriver. There we go. Yeah. So that's that. This style here uh, with these brackets. I just bend the bottom over, send it on to the press, and then there was another style back here. Freaking GoPro just shuts off in the middle of recording. Now this style here, normally, if you find the well, this is like a E and an I, I guess. I used to call it a W, until the internet corrected me. Sometimes, you could just crack these. With the hammer, right? And then I send that on through to the second press. But if you have a bunch of them, I would line them up, right? Just line up the welds. Now this one here. Always something with these transformers, man. Most of the time, these ones here are going to be copper. But I have come across some aluminum ones. So... This one here looks suspect. This one here. No, I think I can do that the same way. Sometimes you gotta be careful if they're like this. There's no way. You're just gonna have to cut the coil. So. <clears throat> if you got a bunch of these, I would just line them up. Get them ready. And just run run them real quick you don't even have to go deep on these uh, because these don't have nothing to lock and the fact that you can break them without even doing anything this just makes it a little bit easier
And then these should come off relatively easy. And even, whatever way you do it, always good to have a lip to work off of. Something solid. See, this one's already delaminating. This one might need 100% um, grinding. Yeah, send that back. Well, I like this hammer here, man. You can work it with the front and then get in there and get some tedious work with the back end, a little more precise. Okay, now that I feel all itchy, I should have wore my jacket. All right, I'm gonna uh, put my jacket on, clean up the rest of this stuff, and uh, get this stuff dialed in, ready to go. And then we're gonna bring in the rest of that stuff and um, finish filling up that trailer. Oh, there goes the crazy cat lady. Feeding all the cats. Let's see what we got over there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shitload of cats. <laughs> anyway, we got a nice little chunk of aluminum on here. Now, I rounded up all the numbers and consolidated them. We're at uh, 218 pounds of extruded, 655 pounds of cast aluminum, 285 pounds of old sheet, and 735 pounds of iron aluminum and uh, we're right around 774 dollars so for our three thousand dollar goal we're about two thousand two hundred and uh something you know two thousand three hundred dollars short so we're gonna have to step it up again uh step it up here a little bit i'm thinking by the time we're done with all this aluminum uh, we should have at least a thousand dollars in aluminum if not more and then it's gonna be a stretch to pull two thousand dollars worth of copper but um, hey we're gonna try you know we're here for it <laughs> I'm hoping we can do about 1500 on this aluminum because we we got a nice little chunk still there in the shop and um, we have we also have some ac coils that we need to go through and i just got a uh thing over there we're gonna have to break down from the neighbor that's an ac thing but i think it's got aluminum coils in it i'm not sure but we'll break it down and um get these numbers up a little bit steve's in here tearing shit up we do have this to break down and this but i'm not sure if this i think this had aluminum coils why it's kind of been sitting here for a while and procrastinating on getting that broke down but we need to break it down get it out of my life out of the way get some flow back here in the shop we got a nice little chunk of uh cast in here so this will add up pretty quick 
all mainly LEDs. I don't see any HIDs on here. And then uh, this is the transformers we have so far. Not a lot. So like I said, man, it's going to be a stretch coming up with $2,000 worth of copper. Um, and I'm not even uh, counting the steel. We might have to add the steel into the mix. And then we have this whole mess here. And then I actually have some more scrap. But all it's a lot of micro scrapping. We're, we're probably going to have to do a couple videos of micro scrapping. Um, this whole thing is basically all of this stuff right here. And here's some 300 amp. I think I got a thousand amp breakers in here. We got some big stuff. But we're going to blow through this stuff. I'm hoping we can blow through this and then uh, get onto these stators real quick. Probably going to make a separate video just on them. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, you should. Finding some more transformers? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I got a Oh, that's right. I do have a couple transformers and some buckets out here. So, anyway, we're going to set the time lapse up. Uh, Steve is uh, picking the music for tonight. <laughs> Okay, it's another day. I actually had to cut off uh, yesterday and go take care of something, but this is where we're at. We got a nice load of aluminum on here, and um, we got about $1,171 worth of material on here already, and uh, we got more coming. We got a bunch of steel that it's not even worth that much. Um, and I got another drum in here and there might be $60, $70 worth of steel we uh, recovered. There's going to be more when we crack the transformers. Uh, I had to leave. Steve stayed here for a while and stripped some wire and made a mess. Uh, we still have a bunch of other stuff to uh, scrap out. I did find some more transformers in the bottom of this drum. And then we have some coils and whatnot. So I'm actually going to uh, probably cut this video off here. And then um, we're going to come back. Uh, today's Friday. I had to go do some other things today. So I really didn't get a chance to get in here and finish this. Um, but these numbers here aren't even including uh, this. Or I have a whole drum of ballast and something else around here i got some brass and some brass breakage i think and then we have still have transformers to crack i got to figure out what happened to the um obviously it's a seal i'm pretty sure but i ran a transformer last night and uh this thing was just spewing oil so we got to get down to that now what this cylinder is this is a single acting cylinder from a harbor freight pusher puller kit from like a body kit so some of them were pull cylinders some of them were push cylinders uh, unfortunately i left the kit with the warranty um, in my old landlord's garage i think so i probably had to go buy a whole new kit which is like 200 bucks to get this cylinder or we're going to take it apart hopefully we can just replace the seal 
Steve was running this wire stripper and um, I wasn't here. I just kind of set it up for him and he ran it. And then he said to me, he goes, you know, he goes, I can appreciate how fast this machine runs. Now before, when he was over here and not understanding that when you're on the back side, you're not gonna keep up with this machine if you're just one person. Even two people, it's hard to keep up with this machine. Uh, two, you always pick what's coming off the machine. He finally realized that. And don't try to pull like from over here underneath because you'll just make a whole big tangled mess. But he said, he goes, now I understand why you say you want to make this machine faster. Even though this machine is probably one of the fastest wire strippers on YouTube because it has an upgraded from a uh, 110 three horse motor to a 225 horse motor with a slightly bigger pulley. This thing easily does about 200 feet a minute, if not more. And um, you know, it has a couple mods on it that no other machine has. I have a roller here. Um, which helps stop the wire from chafing um, Now some machines might not have that issue, but this machine is actually sitting up pretty high it's Probably the only machine uh, in the world with a clutch and soon to be uh, An active button here now that I have the milling machine. I can I can make the parts. I need for this we are um, we're, we're gonna mill some heads here and I have an awesome, I got a big cube. Wait till you see what I'm gonna do with this cube. I'm gonna make something cool. Steve was like, yeah, I can see why you're always saying you wanna make it faster because even though this thing goes fast, when you put a piece of wire in it and you got another piece in your hand and you're waiting for this machine to spit it out, you're kinda of wishing it was going faster. Now, ultimately, when I uh, make this, the way I want it you know not only can you push on this and put this thing in neutral but what I want is to be able to pull down on this and when you pull down on it it's actually going to make the machine go faster um, and wait to see how I want to accomplish that it's not going to be with a variable speed uh, motor um, it's, it's going to be a, another way which is going to be uh, pretty awesome going to be the only one like it it's actually relatively simple. I have most of the parts to do it. It's just, you know, finding the time and the engineering to actually get it all to work on there. It's going to be pretty cool. And eventually what I'd really like to do is somehow incorporate this into this machine, do away with that 110 motor, and just have this powered off the same motor. And uh, I have some flywheels around here. Uh, I'd really like to put a flywheel on this thing. That way, once this thing gets spinning, it's not going to be a problem running more than one machine. And then there's actually a third attachment I'd like to have on this. And then this will be the ultimate wire stripping setup. Uh, plus, uh, hopefully here soon, we're going to be making some headway on the um, granulator. We we're over here trying to figure out how to get this chuck on this lathe because this is like a collet lathe but i don't know if i'm going to be able to get the shaft in this machine we're going to try uh but we need to get this thing running so we can make some other parts as well there's a shaft down there for the we need to either uh, make a whole new shaft which i have one that'll work or I need to um, weld up the shaft in here, in that section there, put a bead of weld down it, cut it back down to the right size, and then cut a new uh, keyway. Or, yeah, I guess cut a new keyway because I don't think I can make the keyway any bigger. Anyway, there's some work that's gonna be involved in that. And wait till you see what this is about. <laughs> I got so many things I, I, I forget about them, man. This here is going to be cool as shit. Wait till you see that. So that's going to be it for these videos. Um, I'm actually, I got a little bit of wire left. I really don't want to strip too much more of this. That's really not worth it. Uh, but maybe some of this wire here. 
Yeah, he stripped most of the big stuff. I actually had a couple big chunks. I wanted to do a video with uh, the new knife I got that one of the subscribers sent me. I appreciate the hell out of that. But I'll probably come out here and strip some of this just to see how it works. So stay tuned for that. And uh, this weekend we're going to continue trying to scrap most of the stuff in the shop, man. Well, I'm trying to work like from the front in, get all the scrap out of here, okay? That's what I need to do. I need to get all this scrap that's been sitting here for a while. Some of it's built up and, um, you know, we're just going to have to bust out a lot of micro scrap in and uh, recover some copper. That bin there is full of all kinds of copper. It's just, you know, I call it effort scrap. It's just not worth it at the time, like this stuff here. I didn't even know what was in this, but it's full of all kinds of aluminum and copper. And, um, you know, it's just like a collaboration of everything. So we need to get it out and uh, clean up the shop and get back on some projects and then uh, definitely go through this whole shop because it is an absolute mess. And I got to find a new pump. For this machine here because um you know swapping that pump back and forth is a it's a it's a hassle so we need to get this thing it's dedicated pump that way i can just keep moving forward on it i have the blade and the cracker over there i don't know if i want to keep this on here or if i want to go to a thicker um thicker metal I forget how I got this on there. I think this might be, that actually might be two different pieces of metal. And I'm not sure how parallel they are. I might have to take this down, put it in a milling machine and, and make sure those are straight, um, which is gonna be a whole thing because to get this off, it has to go down. And that means this has to come off of this, which is now welded to the table. And I'm not even sure if we have enough height uh, to do that. Maybe. Yeah, I think we do. But still a lot of mods to do to this thing. I just need to stay on it because um, I think this is going to be the new future over here. Um, because the transformers, you know, they're, not, they're just trickling in really slow. And every month it seems like they're trickling in less and less. So I need to um, transfer over to something else that's still going to bring in a bunch of copper into the shop because um, I got some plans for copper. Uh, now the copper wire is not going to go anywhere, but uh, you know we got to substitute uh, some other things as well. You know we got to keep it keep it moving. So <laughs> on that note, if you've come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to continue this kind of scrap marathon, uh, cleaning out the shop. Hopefully we'll actually make some headway this weekend and get it back to where I could actually maybe pull my truck in here or park a trailer in here or something. It just seems to me this is stressing me out. It's just a bunch of wasted space and I got to kind of just like every inch of this shop just needs to be gone through. So stay tuned for that freaking mess. <laughs> okay, so I accidentally deleted uh, the rest of the footage I had um, loading that up and cracking the transformers. But uh, the number two copper, we had 347 pounds. I got 343 a pound for $1,190.21. Then we had Bear Bright, 115 pounds. That was all that spaghetti wire, man. <laughs> Steve said he was stripping that shit for hours. Um, got 360 a pound. $414. Then we had uh, Clean Extrusion, 264 pounds, 70 cents a pound, $184.80. Then we had Old Sheet Aluminum, 288 pounds, 55 cents a pound, $158.40. Then we had Steel, which, ha, <laughs> um, 661 pounds of steel. Now, they don't even buy steel at General Metals. What happened was, um, I had thrown a bunch of iron aluminum in a barrel. And then, um, they put that giant rotor 
from that electric motor on a pallet. And uh, the dude just thought I was selling him steel. It was the uh, the old man that was there. It wasn't the son. And um, I didn't realize he just thought it was steel. So I didn't catch it until it was all done. And um, I wound up um, losing a little bit of money there. But we had uh, $39.66. But the fact that I got um, a little higher price for that copper and the regular steel... Um, I would have taken that over and um, sold that at the, the new place, which I went to today. And the Bear Bright, I actually got three eighty dollars a pound. Uh, Irony Smelt, which should have been another 600 and something freaking pounds. $0.15 cents a pound, $35.25. Number two, Wire, $72 pounds, dollar a pound, $72.00. Number one wire, 92 pounds, 255 a pound, $234.60. Cast aluminum, 1,204 pounds, 58 cents a pound. Nice seeing that come up above uh, old sheet. $698.32. Small batteries, $318. 318 pounds, 15 cents a pound. 47.70. I'm pretty sure that came up a little bit. I thought I used to get like 10 cents for that. Hmm. Ballast. 239 pounds. 16 cents a pound. I used to only get like 12 cents or 11 cents for that. So that came up. 38.24 for a total of $3,113.18. So we did meet our three thousand dollar goal we beat it by a hundred and thirteen dollars which is freaking awesome so is this going to be my last ticket at general metals i don't know i've been dealing with them for 13 years um they've always treated me right but this uh new place sa recycling has given me a hell of a deal it's a lot closer locally um but there's other stuff involved with that that you know it's like a give and take almost you know what i'm saying you get used to something and, um, you know, dealing with a new company, it, it has its up and downs, you know, I'll, I'll just say that. So, um, but so far, um, I like it, you know, they treated me right and, um, you know, we're going to, uh, sell them some more copper tomorrow. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard.
Now, uh, I went and sold the bright and shiny already. Uh, made a quick $250, okay? And um, it wasn't even that much. It was only like 600 something pounds. So basically, I got paid to transport it, uh, which I like. Now, we have some big stuff. And we're, we're probably gonna strip every bit of this wire. Oh shit, man, look at that. I bought a little nugget as bright and shiny, a little bit of insulate. That's okay because, check this out. I noticed this when I picked this up. Down in here, look at all them clean nuggets. It looks like there's some strip 600 down in there or something. Uh, what would you call this, a jump starter? Basically so we can test uh, power to engines and uh, fire them up. Steve's going to be uh, cutting some steel with our best arc plasma cutter. And this cart started its life out as a AC uh, thing for a car. Recovery. AC recovery. We uh, He took it apart. We actually recovered a compressor out of it and a bunch of other cool little parts that were around here somewhere that tank this was the uh there you go this was the thing the thing was trash it was pretty much outside in the weather for a while um but i like the cart and we're constantly dragging batteries around to power shit up so what we're gonna do is put two big batteries that I have on here. 